Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another Brawl deck and it's time to party as we're playing with Zagras, Thief of Heartbeats as our commander, the 6 mana for 4 legendary Vampire Rogue with Flying, Death Touch and Haste, and it costs 1 less to cast for each creature in our party, and the party creature types include Cleric, Rogue, Warrior and Wizard, so if we have all 4 creature types in play at the same time, Zagras only costs a black and a red to play, and then other creatures we control have Death Touch, and whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a Planeswalker, destroy that Planeswalker, so our creatures have Death Touch for Planeswalkers as well. So Zagros makes for an awesome curve topper in a red-black party deck. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, of course we're gonna have plenty of creatures with the corresponding creature types. At one mana we've got Archfiend's Vessel, a 1-1 Cleric with lifelink, and if the vessel entered from a graveyard we can turn it into a 5-5 Demon, and we've got a few ways of reanimating the vessel. At 2 mana we've got Acquisitions Expert, a 1-2 Rogue, that makes the opponent discard a card, and we can take a look at more cards from the opponent's hand based on how many creatures are in our party. Malakir Blood Priest, a 2-1 Cleric, that drains the opponent when it enters the battlefield, equal to the number of creatures in our party. Null Priest of Oblivion, a 2-1 Cleric with Menace and Lifelink. Menace also a nice keyword to have alongside Death Touch, as we can potentially take out multiple creatures if the opponent tries to block, and we can also kick the Null Priest for 4 mana, in which case we can reanimate a creature from our graveyard as well. Grotak Bug Catcher, a 1-2 Warrior with Trample, and when the Bug Catcher attacks it gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn for each creature in our party, so by itself it's a 2-2 Trample when attacking, but could potentially reach up to a 5-2 Trample with a full party. Hardfire Immolator, one of the few wizards in the deck, a 2-2 with Prowess, so it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn whenever we cast a non-creature spell, and for a single red mana we can sacrifice the Immolator, and it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker, and the Immolator will also have Death Touch if we have Zagros in play, so that means it can take out any creature or planeswalker from the opponent if we sacrifice it while Zagros is in play. Then we've got Cargon Intimidator, a 2 mana 3 1 warrior with a nice set of abilities, including giving it plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. We can prevent a creature from blocking one of our warriors, and we can give one of our warriors trample until end of turn. Robber of the Rich, a 2 2 rogue with reach and haste that can potentially gain card advantage from the opponent's library if we have fewer cards in hand when it attacks. We've got the Stonework Pack Beast as a 2 1 beast that also counts as a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard, so perfect for filling out our party, and it can also potentially fix our mana. Then at 3 mana, we've got Blank Bloom Rogue, which we can also play as a tap land, otherwise, it's a 2 3 rogue with menace that gets plus 3 plus 0 as long as an opponent has 8 or more cards in their graveyard. Then we've got Tabarax as a 3 mana 2 2 flying cleric, and whenever another non token creature we control dies, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Tabarax, and if that creature was a cleric, we can also draw a card at the cost of 1 life. Veto a 1 3 cleric, saying whenever we gain life, target opponent loses that much life, and for 5 mana, all our creatures gain lifelink until end of turn. Nighthawk Scavenger is a flying rogue with death touch and lifelink, whose power is equal to 1 plus the number of card types among cards in the opponent's graveyards. Ardent Electromancer, a 3-2 wizard, when it enters a battlefield it adds a red mana to our mana pool for each creature in our party, so it's nice to help us double spell. Bonecrusher Giant just counts as a removal spell here, doesn't have any relevant creature types, but we can first deal 2 damage to any target and then cast a 4-3 Giant. Relic Robber, a 2-2 rogue with haste, and when a robber deals combat damage to a player, that player makes an 0-1 colorless goblin construct artifact creature token that deals 1 damage to them at the beginning of their upkeep. We've got Shadow Skull Charger as a 3 mana 4 3 trampling hasty warrior that we can also kick for 2 mana, in which case it gets 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and then we don't have to return it to our hand at the beginning of the next end step. The Howl Bonder is a 3 mana 2 2 warrior with menace, saying each creature we control with menace cannot be blocked except by 3 or more creatures, so it gives all our creatures super menace. Then we've got a Rankle Master of Pranks, a 3-3 Flying Hasty Rogue, and when it hits the opponent we can choose between making each player discard a card, lose a life and draw a card, or sacrifice a creature. And then we've got Thundering Spark Mage as a 4-mana 2-2 Wizard, that when it enters the battlefield deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, where X is the number of creatures in our party. Then at 5-mana we've got Drana, the last Blood Chief, a 4-4 Flying Vampire Cleric, and when Drana attacks, the opponent can choose a non-legendary creature card from our graveyard that we get to reanimate, and we can also put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and it turns into a Vampire. 
We've got Shatter Skull Minotaur, a 6 mana 5 4 Minotaur Warrior with haste, and it costs 1 less to cast for each creature in our party, so it can potentially just cost double red with the full party. And then Morog, Fury of Akum, a 6 mana 6 6 Minotaur Warrior, giving attacking creatures plus 1 plus 0 for each time they've attacked this turn, and Landfall can potentially give us additional attack steps. And then going over the non creature spells. Got some removal with the Blood Chief's Thirst, which we can also kick to take care of larger creatures. Heartless Act destroys a creature without a counter at instant speed for 2 mana. Royal Eruption dealing 3 damage can also be kicked and can also go face. Thundering Rebuke deals 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker. Arcane Signet helps us ramp. Shatter Skull Smashing can be played as a land or as removal. At 3 mana we've got Call of the Death Dweller, another way of potentially reanimating our Archfiend's Vessel, alongside a 2-drop or just reanimate one of our many 3-drops. Then we've got Inscription of Ruin, also a way of reanimating creatures, but also has a flexibility of being a removal spell or make the opponent discard two cards. Soul Shatter, another nice instant speed removal spell, taking care of the opponent's largest creature or planeswalker. We've got Ravager's Mace, giving the equipped creature plus one plus so for each creature in our party, and it also has Menace. And then we've got Agadim's Awakening as another dual-faced land here that we can potentially cast as a sorcery to reanimate a bunch of creatures from our graveyard. And then Hagra Mauling, another dual faced card that's either a land or a 4 mana removal spell. And then topping off our curve, we've got Amber Cleave as a nice equipment to potentially give a creature plus plus one a double strike and trample. And Thwart a Grave, a 6 mana sorcery that can reanimate two of our creatures and also costs one less to cast for each creature in our party. And then going over the mana base real quick, we've got both castles with Castle Lochthwain as a potential card draw engine and Castle Embreth to pump the team. We've got 7 Swamps, 8 Mountains, a bunch of dual lands with Bloodfell Caves, Temple of Malice, Command Tower, and Fabled Passage, and also a Crawling Barrens as a land that can turn into a creature to maybe get us across the finish line. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Zareth Sand deck. So blue-black rogues. Now Zareth is a little awkward as a commander, because you can't actually use the ability to put it in play for 4 mana, so they're going to be limited to casting it for 5. This hand's fine. And then I'll hang on to the rogue as a creature. So I can go turn to Immolator. I guess these are both wizards. So that's not the best start. And we kind of want to wait with Blood Priest until we've got more creature types in play. The rest is going to take my Rebuke. Yeah, I guess we'll just play the Blood Priest here since that lets me go Electromancer into Immolator next turn. Nighthawk Scavenger, mills me for two. Already a 4-3 Death Touch lifelink, so it's going to be tricky to kill with our Immolator here. So if we get Zagar simply first, Immolator can kill Scavenger. Heartless Act could also do it. I think I would rather just play Black Bloom Rogue for now. And another creature to my party. And then keep Heartless Act to maybe kill Zareth if they try and flash that in next turn. Alright. So, how about play lands and just attack with all. If I play Zagros, they're just going to counter it or kill it. Seems like a good spot for Embercleave. And then I still have Heartless Act available. Don't even have to put the Cleave on the Immolator itself. Could just let the trade happen and put it elsewhere. Although putting it on emulator seems fine. 
And then if they try and kill Immolator, I can still sacrifice it to take out Scavenger. Unsubstantiate to bounce it. Yeah. I think I'll sacrifice it now. We still have a wizard in play for party purposes. Opponent falls to 17. All right, five mana, so now they can flash in Zareth potentially. So I don't really want to equip Cleave and be shields down on Heartless Act. We've got six cards in our graveyard, so this can turn into a Death Touch creature as well. Yeah, I don't know if I want to play Zagros here. I think I'm just attacking with Black Bloom Rogue. And if they flash in Zareth, I can Heartless Act it. Because I don't really want to lose any party types. So Zagros down. And Forcer will gain Death Touch. The Rankle can't quite be cast here. So, maybe Inscription, make the opponent discard two cards. See what they do. Gets cancelled. Do we want to attack with everyone here? I think I still just attack with my Rogue. A Ruin Crab gonna mill me some more, but no land. So, could go for Amber Cleave Equip, could play Zagros. I mean, if they counter Zagros, I can still replay it for 5 mana next turn potentially. So, don't really mind if that happens. As a scatter. And then I don't think I'll be attacking. This cry doesn't really matter, but I guess I'll take a land. So points down to one card in hand. If they can replay Zareth for seven. Alright, so if I play Minotaur for three mana, I also have a warrior, but Sagras will still Costs 4 mana, which doesn't quite work out. Could get Rankle in there, or can just replace Zagros. Seems fine. Alright, opponent had a rewind, which is actually quite good here. Let's them play Zareth as well. So we'll just have to hang back. Opponent stop decking, we still have a lot of action. But I will have to trade here. Opponent stays back. Alright, Castle comes into play tapped. If I play Minotaur, I can't equip Amber Cleave, so I might be better off just playing Rankle at that point. Also gets countered. Alright. Rogue is now a 5 3 menace, so that's nice. Still staying back, and then next turn we can maybe Minotaur plus equip Amber Cleave and smash. Jace with Kicker. One's gonna scry two. Bottom, bottom. And the other one found a Drown in the Loch, so that's kind of perfect for them. They can kill Black Bloom Rogue attack and force me to double block. And yeah, I guess that has to happen here. What's the alternative? 
take four, my opponent gets to steal like a Rankle or a Drana. Yeah, that seems pretty bad. So yeah, some fortunate draws from my opponent. Bunch of counter spells into Jace finding Drown. And now my Minotaur and Zagras are pretty expensive to replay. Call of the Death Dweller. What does that do for me? I do have an Archfiend's Vessel to reanimate, so can bring that back alongside a 2-drop, which would probably be a Robber of the Rich. And then I can equip my Robber with Embercleave. And I guess we'll just go face at this point. Opponent falls to seven. Still have 24 cards remaining, so not too close to getting decked. Jay's gonna scry to try and find a perfect card here. Bottom, bottom, and draws a land, so don't think that's gonna cut it. And my opponent explodes, awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing an Akiri deck, so red-white equipment. And yeah, we've got a fine hand. It's a little creature light, but having a lot of removal is gonna be good against the red-white equipment deck, I think. And then, as long as we pick up any creature we can cast around turn 3 or 4, we can either set up Zagros or Embercleave, or Zagros into Embercleave. Turn 1, do we see a Fireblade Charger? We don't. Intimidator the draw. Play that first so we deal more damage, and then Blood Priest also drains for two. Ooh, Hello Blade. Soul Shatter is one of the few clean answers for a Hello Blade, so that's actually a nice draw. Now I'll probably have to cast it now. Alternatively, I can make Intimidator not be able to be blocked. But then we risk my opponent playing something else that dies instead of the Hello Blade, and. And, I mean, maybe I don't need to get rid of the Hello Blade, and I can just kind of go over the top with Embercleave. Although that is a risky proposition. Yeah, you know what? I think I'll wait one turn. And then we'll turn the Hello Blade into a Coward. Hit for three and play Blood Priest, and then... Next turn I have the flexibility of playing Zagras or Cleave. As well as maybe using Removal if they equip the Hello Blade. And it's gonna be a scavenged blade, perfect. Plays right into our soul shatter plan. And a kite sail to give the hello blade flying. So I probably need to kill hello blade now, otherwise next turn they could uh, play Akiri and start drawing extra cards and then they can sack Akiri instead of the hello blade. So yeah, let's uh, Soul Shatter here. Suppose we could have waited until my opponent cast Akiri to maybe catch them off guard. Not sure if there's any flash creatures I need to be worried about. And then we can pump Intimidator. And then next turn we've got some nice options with Zagros and Cleave. Opponent's got their own Intimidator. And a Utility Knife to give it plus one plus one. Ooh, Spark Mage is brutal here.
opponent's at 8 and we haven't even cast one of our finishers. Akiri shows up and a Shadow Spear. But I think it's going to be too little too late. Uh, let's see, I can Rebuke and Zagros. And yeah, my opponent explodes. Well, that was a fast game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Thassa Deep Dwelling deck. This hand seems fine. Castle does come into play tapped at the moment. But I can use this cry to find an extra land that comes into play untapped, or maybe something we can cast off the mana that Electromancer generates. Probably can't keep Drana at this point. Null Priest to draw. Suppose we can Null Priest first and then Expert next turn. And Ghostly Pilfer draws the opponent a card if we play our commander. Yeah, I think I like Expert more than I like playing one of my 3-drops here. Opponent has to reveal two cards and we get to take one of them. Well, I guess I'll take the Sanctuary. Tomb Raider draws a card. Also good synergy with Thassa. Soul Shatter could be a potential answer to the Indestructible God if it turns into a creature. For now, let's see, if I play Electromancer I get to add 3 mana, so it pays for itself and then I can still play Zagros afterwards. Yeah, that checks out. Opponent does get to draw a card. And we get to smash. Falls to 16. Solm Simulacrum for a bit of ramp. So, if I play Mountain, I could even activate Castle Embereth here. If I attack with everyone, Poden probably puts Simulacrum on Electromancer, which is not the best trade for me. Could also Soul Shatter to kill Simulacrum. And then they probably trade Pilfer for Electromancer. Maybe Chump or just take 7. Although Call of the Death Dweller means I kind of want one of my creatures to die. So I think I just attack here. And then maybe we'll leverage Castle if it lines up. And otherwise I might just play Tabarox even if it misses out on a counter or two. Alright, so Pun just going for the trades. That's fine. Falls to 10. And then I kind of like Call of the Death Dweller, get back Electromancer and play Tabarax afterwards. Just add as much power toughness to the board as possible. Could have had a slightly bigger Tabarax if we played its first main phase. Gadwick draws three. Well, let's see here. So Zagros is a rogue, so Intimidator is not too useful there. But I guess we'll just Soul Shatter and attack. Opponent can sack Tomb Raider. 
Gets rid of Gandwick instead. Falls to three. And I can't really think of too many cards that get him out of this. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a Yurion Sky Nomad deck. So it's not an actual companion, it's their commander. Uh, yeah, this sounds fine. Just play the tapped. And then we can play a Rogue, a Cleric to discount our Minotaur. Arcane Signet, a nice one. Yeah, I think I wait on Robber until we can cast it more efficiently. Although, let's see. Could also play the Cleric first. I guess that makes sense, and then hold Robber since we can maybe play the Rogue and the Warrior in the same turn. Apparition gonna exile Tabarax, unfortunately. The token's just an illusion, doesn't have any relevant creature types. Well, um, if I play another creature, they can just play Yorion next turn, Flicker Apparition and Exile it as well. So that's not great, so I probably just rebuke and play Robber. And we hit a Cloudkin Seer. It is from M20, but I think it's one of those arena exclusives that you still get to play. Ghost Light, pretty nice at bouncing the token. So... Got a couple options. Could just play the Minotaur and Smash. Kind of like that idea. Or I can attack with the Robber. And then see what we exile, but... If I play Cloudkin Seer, I wouldn't be able to spend my other two mana. Or I could play Zagros. Also, if I play Minotaur, we'll have Rogue and Warrior, so I can maybe play a cheaper Zagros later. I don't have to send a Robber, I guess. I can just send Minotaur. Although, I guess if they trade, it's fine. Because... The opponent flickering ghost light with Yorion could also be annoying. Meteorite's gonna kill my robber. Now the cards exiled by robber will still be accessible if we play another rogue. Charming Prince gonna flicker ghost light. They probably should have attacked first. But it does bounce my Minotaur, and yeah. That does set me back quite a bit, and now they've got a Charming Prince Yorion loop which is going to be very hard to beat. So I'm not liking my chances. So what's the play here? Scavenger plus Rogue. Curabus a Sea God. Also quite scary here, so they're making good use of all their ramp. So... And now what? Can play Zagros. If I play Howl Bonder, I still won't be able to play Zagros or Minotaur afterwards. So I guess we just play Zagros and attack. Bones at 10. But now all my things are tapped. And next turn they can steal Zagros if they don't flicker Kyurabas the Sea God. Conundrum for an extra card first. They're probably gonna flicker the Saga to get an extra Kraken. 
So at least they won't steal Zagros right away. But yeah, the Charming Prince plus Yorion Loop is incredibly difficult to beat. A Relic Robber to draw. So we've got Rogue and Rogue. So not getting any discounts here. Relic Robber also dies to the Meteorite, so does the Halbonder, so... Best bet is Minotaur Smash. Trades for the 8-8 Hexproof. But if I don't find removal for Charming Prince or Yurion... I'm not gonna stand a chance. Conquer's death, Zagros as well. Yeah, this is pretty gross. Take action. Fall to six. And everything comes back. Alright, I think this game's over. Anything to get back with Call of the Death Dweller. I guess I can get my free Cloudkin Seer. Might as well. And we hit a Riddle Master Sphinx as well. All right, we got our value. GG's. Opponent can attack with all, and that'll do it. First, gonna get their Cloudkin Seer back. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Iluna Mutate deck, and they're also playing Kiruga as companion. So, their deck is gonna be slow which we want to take advantage of by being fast. This hand is okay. Soul Shatter could also be quite nice against a big mutate creature. But the two tap lands could potentially be an issue. So we've got a turn two Null Priest. Ideally we find another two drop we can play on turn three. So let's cry towards one. Charger. I guess I can go Null Priest into Charger. Just for some additional damage. Yeah, I guess that's fine. We would prefer our creatures to stay in play to help us play a cheaper Zagros. But uh, a repeatable way of dealing for damage isn't too bad. Palladium Mirror. Probably gonna have to kill that before it makes too much mana. And next turn, can either play Taboranx or Charger. Taboranx a second cleric, so not super useful for Zagras. Ideally, we just find an untapped land for Rankle. Yeah, I'll go with Tabarax.
Is it time for Iluna? At least with Tamborax in play, if they cast a Sweeper, we'll get to draw a few cards. There's Iluna. So I'm kind of liking... Let's see, if I play Charger, I still won't be able to Ember Cleave. One mana short and a red mana short as well. I mean, I could just Smash and Ember Cleave if they block. Or I could Zagros and attack. I kind of prefer getting Ember Cleave in play. And if they take it, I could just play a Kick Charger second main. And then if we draw another land, we could maybe play Zagros and Ember Cleave in the same turn, which is going to be devastating. Ooh, Sterix mutated onto Iluna. That's bad news. Finds Visionary. And the land. Do they have more mutates? They do, Parcel Beasts. Uh-oh. Finds a shark and a bunch more lanes. And then now Iluna can also potentially be used as a parcel beast to draw some extra cards. Our opponent passes. Did not draw the land, unfortunately. So what's the play? I could Zagras, I could Ember Cleave. I think I gotta go for Ember Cleave, in which case I also get to Royal Eruption the Shark. To clear an extra blocker. Yeah, that's probably fine. And then we're kind of hoping Iluna blocks. Although we might be able to just kill them. Blocks Tabarax. Null Priest does have Menace. So it's gonna chump Charger. So if I were to Ember Cleave Charger, that still gets him for 10, plus 2 from Null Priest is not lethal. So I'm better off killing Iluna. They didn't block Charger. So now if I were to Ember Cleave, my opponent would be dead unless they have, I guess, Stomp from Bonecrusher Giant is one of the few things I can think of they could have to interact, given the Karuga Companion. Yeah, I think I go for it. Because if I try and Ember Cleave Tabarax and they Stomp, that's also quite bad for me. So might as well go for lethal. Iluna draws. And I think we got there. Alright, sweet. So yeah, Amber Cleave can definitely bail us out in a lot of situations. And Zagros plus Amber Cleave, also a great combo if we can get both in play at the same time. So yeah, Zagros Brawl, a nice aggressive creature tribal deck, is going to struggle against some more controlling Brawl decks. Don't really want to face too many sweeper effects, since those are quite difficult to recover from. But against other creature decks, we can often get an early Zagros in play and apply a ton of pressure. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.